Hey everyone, welcome to CNR Studios. I'm Corey. We're downstairs. We're taking a look at some of the Brick Mania kits I have built in recent weeks. We've got a couple tanks, a Hilo, a World War II aircraft. So I take a look at them. This won't be in-depth reviews of them, but more of a quick look at them, what I like about them, what I don't like about them. Uh, most of these have been out for quite some time. This one's a little bit newer, but I've been trying to get through my back stock because right over here is a whole bunch of stuff that came in because we've had a bunch of pre-orders come in from Lego, stuff coming from Brickmania, action figures just kind of all hit at once on pre-orders and stuff. So that'll be very exciting. So in preparation for that, I've been trying to really get through some of the backstop. Unfortunately, if you have a backlog of Lego sets, it's just a never ending battle. You're always gonna have it. So we're trying to make headway. So we did some four smaller kits. So we're gonna have the jump. We're gonna take a little bit more in-depth look at them. All right, so I've lowered the camera down a little bit. We're gonna take a look at some of these vehicles. I think we're gonna start with the oldest one first. And that is the, I believe it's pronounced Caro Armato M1340. So Caro Armato. This is an Italian tank used during World War II. It would have been heavily used in North Africa against both the British and against the Americans. It is, I believe, though a small tank by American standards. It is, I think, I believe, a medium tank according to the Italians. The Italians had very lack bluster armor it has a small gun probably close to the equivalent of american 37 millimeter a couple machine guns no anti-aircraft or coaxial machine gun on top it does have some pioneer tools on it so this tank came out in for the 1941 or 40 theme from last year in 2021 if i remember correctly this one was designed by mary wilson and i'd like to take this chance to just congratulate mary wilson on going to lego representing kind of the third party lego world now working for lego as a designer so that's pretty exciting to think maybe she'll send some lego to brick mania's way just to help on the cost of it so i really like this tank i like the small size i think mary wilson really does a good job with these small tanks she's done several stewards now uh this guy and a couple other smaller vehicles she picks puts a lot of details in a compact package this does have working features like a side door there which does pop open it does have a pretty pretty good track motion again this one has a front a gear for the drive wheel so generally when they have a gear some teeth lock and it seems to go a little bit better it has pretty good representation for the suspension as well as for printing it does have unit markers on the turret and then it has rivets gun ports on or i should say just drive ports on the front chain exhaust detail overall i think a nice little tank and it kind of represents the italian tanks pretty well just being a small kind of boxy shaped they had a very tall turret because this turret is on top of this kind of like casemate almost uh, that houses a couple other machine guns so just a pretty tall target uh, pretty easy to hit and not very strong armor but still very cool representation for brick many and other italian tanks so we'll go on to another tank this is an m3 stewart tank this would have been seen in use in north africa uh, both by the americans and by the british and this one specifically set up as Patton's tank while training at the desert warfare facility in california in preparation for going to north africa so as a, one of Patton's tank he does have it adorned with his markings with his ranking uh and so that's pretty cool so the m3 stewart is technically the united states first light tank and i say that because even though there was n2 series of stewards they were not listed as tanks in order to get production they were believed called scout cars so there was a differentiation there so this is officially the m3 was the first american light tank 
Like most Stuarts, it has a lot of Browning M1919 30 caliber machine guns. Two on the sides, one on the front, one coaxially mounted as well. They do swivel. This one also has um, opening rear hatch in the back, which is pretty cool. Pioneer Tools again does have the antenna feature. And I'll try to get a close up so we can see some of those markings are pretty good. I like those. I like the inclusions of brick arms. This is part of the bristling with brick arms again, but I just think it looks good. You see the two stars for Patton's general rank. Uh, the Patton figure is pretty excellent. I did not mention the Italian figure, so I'll get him over here as well. So the Italian figure is pretty simple. It uses kind of that Star Wars officer headpiece. It has good markings on the trousers with the boots. Excuse me, be our sound in the background. It's just our dog running around. And then Patton, though, I think has been brought to the next level. So you see his binoculars. I went with the Brick, or brick Forge or Brick Warrior binoculars, the Brick Mania sells now. Pistol pouch, markings. You see his unit patch up front. which is pretty cool. I like this guy quite a bit. I think the headgear I would like to replace soon uh, whenever Brickmanger starts offering their new kind of American armor helmet or head covering separate. I think that'll be pretty cool. Just gives it a little bit more detail. Overall, I really like this tank quite a bit. I will say the track links on it are pretty tight. They don't roll super well so if I they kind of have some roll to it they are a bit stiff so one thing I will notice the other negative because of the flags on the side obviously the turret will hit back and forth so that is something important to note you can kind of fold them down though not really optimal for that purpose I do like this tank quite a bit I think it's a good idea good kind of step forward I know I have the M2A for it M2A4 will have that comparison as well as the Honey, which is Mary Wilson's first attempt at a Stuart tank, kind of in the British coloring, so we can do. I forgot to note when looking at the uh, Italian tank, it does have a bit of interior, not a lot. Space for a minifigure has a couple levers, so it can actually control just an additional play feature, which I do enjoy when designers add that. Feels like you're getting a little bit more value for the vehicle. So that kind of covers the tanks. Like I said, I like them both. They have it's a lot of features in the compact size. They really get some of the details of the tank itself. And I love the printing on them. I don't think either of these had a sticker, which is really, really nice. I always find that a perk. Uh, the other thing, I think that's all the features on a steward. So now we're gonna go into, oh, let's do this one next. So the MASH helicopter. So the H-13 Sioux. Uh, this is a Korean War era. I think it was a good time to build it with Korean War month going on. So MASH helicopters, some might be familiar with the famous TV show called MASH. These were mobile um, medic, medic units, uh, field expedited hospitals, if you will. And this was one of the first real serious uses of a helicopter in combat, issue, in combat scenarios. Uh, before this, they were used for reconnaissance. But now we were there using them um, to life flight wounded on the battlefield to mash units. So I, when I first saw this, I thought it was going to be a pretty fragile build. But as you can see, it's pretty swooshable, even with the flex tubing on the tail. It does hold on pretty good. It doesn't have a perfect straight angle. It's just the nature of flex tubing. There might be inconsistencies in the uh, like plastic-like material but it holds its shape and it's strong. It has the additional flex tubing at the boom. Uh, 
for the rear rotor. It has cockpit detailing. It has a very nice, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see it, printed control panel. It has engine details, which I like quite a bit, just that inclusion. A pretty awesome, uh, we'll open this up again, kind of figure on the inside with the texture printing, kind of similar to the cigar. Uh, great kind of field jacket. For printing, it does have printing stars and bars. It has printing on the red ambulance cross. Like I said, the control unit, printing on the props, back here and on here. And then the rest also has the mash printing. Uh, for stickers, it does have a few stickers. It has one up top right here. And then it has stickers on the kind of glass bubble. Uh, these ones I find very annoying to put on uh, because they are just really hard to get on straight. They do have bubbles. It's a curved piece, so it's kind of hard to get the exact angle of them right. Um, maybe in the future, I'm sure Brickman is always working to become better, so maybe in the future we'll see something like this printed. I know it'll be incredibly difficult, but I'm sure Slam will achieve that goal one day, at least achieve it in a way that would make sense and be somewhat fast to do. Uh, pros and cons. Pros, I really, really like this helicopter. It's a kind of a pretty decent price point. It's a relatively famous helicopter because of the MASH TV show. I like it. It is, you know, the Korean War, the forgotten war in American history, um, or I should say more recent American history. I do enjoy it. I like it has two Mania uh, stretchers. They're kind of brick-built stretcher, which I really like. Uh, negatives. I uh, did not like the sticker bubble on the front cockpit. I just did not like how they went on. Uh, they were very kind of tricky, and I don't think the instructions offered a really good guide, like some of the other models they had. Uh, the other slight negative, if you're a perfectionist, it's just gonna be really hard to get that flex tuning exactly aligned perfectly, and that's again because of the difference in uh, strength and flexibility of the tubing. Otherwise, I really, really like this. Highly would recommend it. Um, maybe my favorite of the four kits shown. Like I said, I was really blown away by it on how sturdy it is. It balances really well. Kind of has a nice, short, squatty look. It feels a little bit more substantial than it actually is. I believe this one only had 238 pieces. And this one, of course, was also a John Canapa build. Before I forget to mention that, I've always been a big fan of John Canapa's stuff. He's afraid, not afraid to go and do things a little bit differently design-wise, so I always like that. Obviously the rotor does spin, so that's always good. All right, we'll move this one kind of all the way, play a little musical chairs for a knock over. All right. So the next one is the P-39 Air Cobra. So this is a pretty cool plane. It is a licensed Bell Boeing kit through Brick Mania. It is a World War II, an early war aircraft. Uh, with the famous part, so uh, uniquely about this aircraft, it was part of the Lend-Lease program. So the Lend-Lease was an act signed by Congress, uh, initiated by Congress, I should say, which provided material support to those fighting the Germans. Largely, we talk about Britain. However, the Russians also did, I should say, the Soviets also did receive aid beginning of World War II, the Russian or Soviet Air Force was rather lacking. They needed fighters to go up against the German Focke-Wolfs and Messerschmitts. The answer was the Boeing P-39, which was outdated to a point at the beginning of the war. Uh, it was not favored by Allied or American fighter pilots. However, it was loved by the Soviets and did have some good armor and good firepower to it. Kit-wise, this was a, I think, uh, Brennan's first kit he did. Uh, I might be wrong on that. This is definitely an early kit for him. Uh, he's kind of become their aircraft specialist, kind of replacing, or I don't want to say replacing, kind of re uh, what Cody used to be, Cody Oso. He was specialized in aircraft, and that's kind of the role Brennan has fit himself into. So it is a uniquely shaped plane. This one I chose, I wanted to get because I wanted a Soviet aircraft in kind of my collection, just something representing it. 
Um, it does come with stickers for both the American kind of shark mouth and then stickers for the Soviet, which is a little bit simpler. It has tricycle landing. Um, the tricycle landing does work pretty good. It does not balance until you put on the front propeller and then it kind of balances well. So this one has an air intake up top, which kind of gives it this unique hump shape rather than being below the wing onto the bottom like you would see on a Mustang or something like that. This one, I believe it's a 20 millimeter cannon up front. I might be wrong on that, but I believe that's what it is. And then it has a 50 caliber machine gun on each side. I really like kind of how these are designed uh, with the little brick arms piece inside. Printing, it has printing. Where's the best way to show this? Printing on the wings, so all the nozzle ports. It has a pretty cool printed piece. I don't know if we're gonna quite get it on camera. Uh, there we go. So you can kind of see it right here through the window. That is a just a um, aiming device, a little crosshair, uh, bullseye style crosshair for fighting against fighters and then going against fighters. And then it has, this one will just take off. It does have that air intake print on it. It's a pretty sturdy build. Um, it has some weak parts. Don't hold it by the wing on the inside. You can hold it on the outside pretty good inside. These aren't held down super well underneath. I guess if I had a complaint, the biggest complaint, it does have some more studs showing that I would like, especially back here on the tail. You can see it has studs here and here, and you could probably get some pieces to fill that in if you wanted to. And then it has some studs showing up front near the cockpit does come with a minifigure. It's kind of a generic minifigure. Um, it can kind of work for both, I think, which is fine with me. You don't really see it too often, but it's a sturdy plane, kind of fits that small plane like the uh, BF-109 or uh, Japanese Zero. Some other options I have, like the uh, Supermarine Spitfire or the Hawker Hurricane as well, kind of all in that same size. So it's a pretty good price point if you want to get a plane. This one's about 293 pieces. It's a relatively small piece count for a pretty cool plane. Again, positives, really like the design, like that it has working landing gear, like that it has a tricycle actually balances. Pretty good. I will say if you put a little pressure, it does fall, but when aligned right, it does steady. Uh, negatives has a little bit too many, few too many studs for me for Brick Mania kit. It has the weaknesses right here by the wing if you try to support the weight there. Um, and then it can be a little finicky to get it balanced perfectly. Uh, I do also like if you have stands, you can put it on a stand pretty easily as well. All right, so we're gonna turn the camera back up a little bit and have some closing thoughts. All right, I hope you all kind of liked this brief kind of quick overview of a few different Brick Mania models. Uh, like I said, three of these are relatively old, probably have been around for about a year or so. This one's relatively new. But I just wanted to take that time to quickly go over what I've been building, what I thought about the kits. If you like kind of this more quicker style review where I don't go super in depth into each individual model and kind of do some things all at once, let me know. Got some great videos coming up. One, the Captain Rex edition, wherever I can point, I can't point well, right there. For Ahsoka came in, so we will do a video of that. I also want to do a video, a pretty big unboxing. Might be one, might be due, might be one of everything, or might be two separate videos, one with the Lego, and one with more action figures and other collectible type items. So we have those coming up. Let me know what you're excited to see. Otherwise, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.